Hello again, folks, in 113. Today we're going to be covering section 11.3, which is all numbers, of course. Stupid, right? That just occurred to me. Cheesy sense of humor, right? Okay. Uh, well, let's look at the calendar. Let's see if we're on a schedule. Looks like we are. Yep. Nat 113, and today is Tuesday, April 20th, and we're covering 1113, or 11.3, I should say. All right, as per schedule, so good. Uh, let's see. Uh, the packet that I have for you today looks like this. It's mostly things that I swiped from your textbook. Here's a good chunk. This is a, a reasonable explanation and the formula for the subject. Uh, let's see. And that would be two pages, because there's basically two concepts. Expected value and fair price. And then there are several examples, and we'll go through each of these. Right. So really no additional sheet from me, uh, to be honest. But it makes sense to me to just do some vocabulary. Pull that out, I need that actually. Let's see. All right, uh, let me start with a diagram. Right. Section 11.3 is about expected expectation or expected value. Think of it this way, right. expected value, it's a formula, is an attempt, this is not writing too well, at transforming probabilities one of these will write um I say good or bad into a net sum. Right. In order to make an educated guess. This is not the formal definition, but this is to give you a feel for it. And if you'll humor me, let me emphasize some key phrases. This is the concept, expectation, a.k.a. expected value, all right? And it's a formula, which we will dissect momentarily, all right? And it's basically also an attempt at transforming opposing probabilities, all right, into a net sum for the sake of making an educated guess. Somebody is texting me. Sister, my old sister. Mm. Mm. Expected value or formula is an attempt at transforming opposing probabilities. Those are probabilities in favor of something happening and then not, and anything not, all right, into a net sum, right? Meaning that you add a bunch of things and potentially subtract depending upon the outcome, all right, of the probabilities, all right? In order to make an educated guess, what would be a good strategy, all right, um, given the situation? Now, uh, just for the sake of space, let me erase this. and uh, draw your diagram. 
going to uh, discuss the outcomes. All right, well, perhaps I'll do this first. Um, okay. Expected value is abbreviated by the letter E. And it will be two things in tandem. It'll be a probability and an amount. Right. And since it's going to be a sum, basically, the sum of these two things. Um, you'll see uh, one, one first probability and an amount that one would perhaps win or lose. And then a subsequent factor term, technically. So you'll see this. I'm sorry, my sister doesn't want to. As many as is necessary, which is why they usually abbreviate um, the end term if there's several ellipses, right, like so. Um, and just to distinguish one group from another, they'll have subscripts. So you'll see one, two, and then the nth. And same thing, subscript one, two, and then the nth one of these. Right. Uh, the types of problems that you see are usually two or three of these back uh, terms. All right. All right. Just a little thought here. Expectation, expected value, literally factors the benefits and losses. potential benefits or losses with each respective probability. What I'm getting at is basically this. The benefit or loss are the A values that are being multiplied in each of these terms. Right? They're literally factors that um, are the potential benefits or losses with each respect, respective probability. Right? Which means that you may potentially get um, something canceled out of existence because the probability is zero. Right? Or you might get a fraction or you might get something that is negative. All right. All right. The point here is though that it's a sum basically comparing <coughs> the benefits or lo losses and then combining them so that you'll see if overall all right, whether there is a true benefit or a true loss. That's really the point of this. In the long run. All right, now, let's consider uh, those outcomes that you may get. And then we'll do some problems. 
Um, here are, in summary, expected value net out outcomes. Um, as mentioned, you could get a negative outcome, whatever the magnitude is. You could get something that is truly neutral. In which case, you, your net outcome would be zero. Well, hopefully this right works. You can get a genuine positive here. All right. If the sum ends up being a negative, then you would define this situation as being a loss overall or in the long run. And then it would not be strategic to engage in whatever the game or activity or experiment is. Right. If your outcome, your sum, is basically a positive overall, right, then you would define that as being a gain. overall or in the long run. And then it would be to one's advantage to engage in this game or experiment or what have you versus a disadvantage is another two phrases you would see. All right. If you get zero, then the, the choice here is, the situation here is what you would call breaking even. Right? It is neither a benefit nor a loss, a disadvantage or an advantage. Right? And this is something that should happen if there is in fact a fair game involved. A truly fair game produces this as the uh, result, the sum. Okay. Right. And just to reiterate, these P's here are each probabilities. Right. And each of these A's are an amount, sometimes it's a dollar of amount, all right, associated with each of those probabilities. Right? It isn't always about money, but it could be some other thing that's being counted or measured, all right? But um, it's an amount, A is an amount. Okay. All right, now let's do a couple of examples here. I don't know if I should turn this on or not. I don't know what the heck how this one's on here. I have to move my camera anyway. All right, 
Let's look at these examples. And I'll try to get a white surface behind it. Sorry, I'm belaboring this, but just wanted to look right. Okay. All right. Um, so keep that in mind. We're going to use this formula several times, and we have to remember how to calculate probabilities pretty much on the fly. All right. And if we get a negative, we get a negative. Like it's okay. Let me be able to to see here. Uh, let me expand on. Okay, here's example one: a new business venture. All right, JetBlue Airlines. Who must have paid some uh, the publisher to uh, mention their name? That's product endorsement, right? Is considering adding a route from Boston to Minneapolis. All right, before making a decision, the company needs to consider many factors, including potential. Profit or loss, right? After consider considerable research, JetBlue estimates that if it adds the route, um, there is a couple of different things here which I would highlight because you're going to take this. 60% chance of making an annual $800,000 profit, right? I'm going to record that, right? There is a 30% chance of making $800,000 annually. Um, a 10% chance of breaking even. Oops, I will use a different color. Black. Very faint. 10% chance of breaking even. which implies zero dollars. These are just died in the middle of these things. Okay. Um, and then lastly, a 30% chance of losing a million dollars, which sounds pretty horrific, right? Considering the magnitude of it. 30%, pardon me, 60 is the red one, sorry. 60 and then we have 30 again. Uh, a loss of one million dollars. Okay. How much can JetBlue expect to make annually on this new route, route, route? Okay. Given these possibilities, all right. Remember, if you have a percentage quoted to you, all right. Percentages are probabilities whether disguised or not. This is a probability. This is a probability. And this is a probability. Right, because percentages can be written in the style of, uh, pardon me, probabilities can be written in the style of percentage. So what we'll do is we'll use basically three of these terms. All right. 
In this case, we'll go up to three. The ellipses are unnecessary at this point. And fill in the information. But let's do it in the style of a fraction. So for the first one, 60% would be 60 over 100. You could always lower the terms. We'll do it as an afterthought. All right. The amount of money that is associated with that probability is 800,000. So immediately adjacent to it, I'm going to put in 800,000, which would technically look like that. All right. And if you want to, since you're dealing with a fraction anyhow, you could just put a one under it. And then next to it, the next term would be the next probability, which in this case is 10%. So you would have 10 over 100, technically. Yes, you could simplify it if you'd like. The amount involved is breaking even, so it would imply that that is zero dollars. And then a third term. I'm gonna start out with always the plus that is in the formula. It's 30% at a loss of a million. So the, what we do in a situation where we have apparently a loss, all right, is let's first translate 30% into a probability. It would start out as 30 over 100. And the amount, since it would be a loss, because I'm mentioning losing, this would have a negative attached to it, all right, in its little pocket here. So negative 1 million. making overall this term out of the three will end up being a negative. So you'll end up subtracting this, all right? Anyhow, before we do that, let's see if we can clean it up a little bit. I need a little bit of space, so I'm gonna erase this. All right, uh, you might wonder, why didn't you simplify the fraction here? Just to sort of um, force a habit. All right. When you have nice round numbers like one zero zero as a denominator, and this is being applied by a multiplication to another number with a bunch of zeros in it, there is a simplification technique that you could employ here. All right, employ two zeros here, two zeros there. All right, which means that this is now sixty times eight thousand. Which, if you just pay attention to the non-zeros, is six times eight is forty-eight and then count the zeros. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Which makes this overall 480,000, right? This is a positive. So in theory, this chunk of the entire problem, right, would be a gain, right? Let's see if it is overall though, right? The next one is 10, uh, 10 over 100. You could simplify it to 1 tenth, that's true, but, um, Ultimately, what's going to happen is that you're multiplying by zero, right? Because it's a break even. So, what's going to happen to this term? It's going to cancel out entirely. You won't have to worry about it. Right? A similar technique to before uh, make any whole number a fraction by sticking a one under it and then cross simplify. The common, greatest common factor of 100 and a million is 100 itself. So. The trick is, the shortcut is two zeros here, this will become one, just like that technically would be one, and then you knock off two zeros here, and then it's three times one, which would be uh, three, <clears throat> and then count the zeros that are left over, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, which makes this 300,000. And since it is a loss, we have to remember that this is a negative $300,000. Okay, now the expected value would be the combination of these two um, amounts overall, right? They have literally factored in the amount of benefit or loss with each of those respective probabilities. But notice that the probability here is a greater probability than here. So even in spite of the fact that this is a far larger sum, 
right? A, hundred, a million versus 800,000, all right? This is the end result for each of them. Right? What is just 480,000 minus 300,000? 180, right? Positive $180,000 which means that this would be a benefit or an advantage in the long run or overall. Right? Because you ended up with a positive figure. Okay. Not too complicated, right? It's very interesting, right? How you could tie a probability to an amount and then compare um, the benefits and losses. Combine them to see if it's a benefit or advantage overall. In this case, it certainly is, right? Because you got a positive. Next one. This one is very relatable. Um, let me see if I could scoop this up. And we'll erase this stuff. We're going to gather information. Let me take some more water. I'll be right back. Maria is taking a multiple choice exam in which there are five possible answers. Right. So let me gather some information, maybe over here to summarize. This is each question is multi multiple choice. All right. All right. Five answers. Um, the instructions indicate that she will be awarded two points for each correct. So plus two points each correct response. Lose half a point, so minus a half a point each wrong incorrect. And that no points will be added or subtracted for answers that are left blank. So, no points. So, zero points, uh, non answers. Okay. So, based upon that information, if Maria does not know the correct answer to a question. Is it to her advantage or disadvantage to guess at an answer? When you are asked, all right, if it's an advantage or a disadvantage without using the word explicitly or the phrase explicitly, they're asking for an expected value and whether it's going to be a positive overall or a negative overall. So we have to factor in um, these points, what they're worth, and then try to determine, based upon this description, multiple choice, five answers each, all right, the probabilities, all right? All right, is it to her advantage or disadvantage to guess at an answer? An answer is implying just one question, all right? So let's just worry about one question here, all right? Let's try this first probability. What is the, this is asking essentially, I'm going to kind of, without moving too much, you know, scribble out this much space for myself to think, all right? What is the probability that she guesses correct each individual question, all right? It would be uh, the cardinal number of things that are correct 
over the cardinal number of the, the, the set or the number of elements in the sample space. All right, so how many answers are correct out of five? All right, essentially. One, and how many total choices are there? There's five. So the fraction for this probability is one-fifth. Right. Um, the benefit of getting that correct would be this amount of points. So factored into that literally would be two points. X1. Right. Um, the second probability here, the probability of incorrect, to simplify, would be equal to the cardinal number of things that are incorrect over the number of possible answers in the sample space, right? So how many things are incorrect out of five? Four of those potentially, right? So the probability here would be four. Four out of five, right? And the loss, potential loss is negative a half. So I'm gonna tie that here. Negative one half points. Okay. The next one may seem superfluous, but let's consider it anyway. Um, when it comes to uh, zero points for non-answers, that's just not participating in the game if you don't answer. All right. So as far as the probability of that happening is concerned, that would be just zero. I guess you could say to yourself, the probability of a non-answer I don't think of how to phrase it. I'm really uh, over over worrying about it, but I, I'm just curious. How would I phrase that? The probability in the case of a non-response would be zero. Or no, you know what? It could be something, but we don't know what it is, all right? All right? The probability is whatever the probability is, all right? But what is the number of points that would be associated with that? It would be zero. So it wouldn't be a concern anyway. Okay? It's not playing the game, really. Right, so this could have some infinitely high probability or nothing at all, all right? but it would still be times zero, so you wouldn't even consider it. Right. It's really these two things that we must take into consideration. So, with that in mind, let's calculate. This first thing is two top times top, bottom times bottom. In terms of a fraction, you would have two-fifths points, and in this case, um, you could simplify first if you'd like, and maybe that would be better. Uh, you could do top times top and bottom times bottom, but you're going to get tenths, which is something that potentially can be simplified, and it will. Um, so in this case, I'm going to simplify it first, so that becomes one, and this becomes two. All right. Two times negative one is negative two. And five times left over one is still five, and you get the same magnitude but of opposite direction. So you have, in this instance, two fifths of a point, right? And in this case, negative two fifths of a point. So if they're the same magnitude but in opposite direction, what's going to happen here? The expected value is going to basically cancel, and you're going to get you're going to get zero, which means that there is neither an advantage nor disadvantage. in this case, because you get a zero.
Now, if you do the second part of this, and I'll scoot this up ever so slightly. Um, it asks you, given these conditions, she can eliminate one of the possibilities, one out of five, right? is it to her advantage or disadvantage in this case to guess at an answer? Right. Now, that's going to change the probabilities. Right? If she can eliminate one of the possible choices, that means that instead of out of five, what would it be if she eliminates one? It would be out of four. And that would make this first probability, in terms of probability of correct, one out of four instead. The amount of points that would be awarded to her is still the same. They haven't changed that condition, so it's two points here. And in this case, uh, the probability would be, well, how many are wrong out of four in this case? Three, right? So the probability of incorrect would be three out of four, and this is negative a half a point. Right. And zero is not something that we have to consider. All right. So let's straighten out the arithmetic here. If this is really uh, one quarter times two, a quarter plus a quarter is a half. Or if you do the uh, intricate work here, this is one, and that's two, top times top, bottom times bottom. This ends up being a half a point. Okay. Um, in this case, uh, this is no way to simplify up front, so you're gonna do brute force, top times top, bottom times bottom and you get negative three over eight points. Three eighths points. Okay, now in order to combine them, remember that the fractions have to be like fractions, meaning they have to have a common denominator. So in this instance, the uh, one half, you'll have to upgrade to some of the eighths. Uh, four times two is eight, so four times one would be four eighths. So if you combine four eighths, the Four eighths the the why can't you talk? <clears throat> four eighths the equivalent of a half minus three eighths. You end up with what overall? You end up with an expected value that is positive overall, but it's just one eighth of a point. All right. So in this case, this would be to the person's advantage. All right. Simply for the fact that it is a positive. Right. So for each individual question, all right, it would be to their advantage to guess. Well, on average. Right. It's an advantage on average. to move this up. Yeah, that is a bit better. All right, here's example three.
Uh, for an outdoor concert, event organizers estimate that 20,000 people will, at uh, will attend if it is not raining. And just to distinguish it from that a condition, 12,000 people will attend if it is raining. Which means what? It means that people are going to show up no matter what. Interesting fact about these people. Uh, on the day of the actual concert, hopefully this is Meteorologists predict that a 30% chance of rain will occur. 30% chance of rain. That's terrible. Let's try this one. That's a little bit better. There's a 30% chance of rain on the actual day. Determine the expected number of people who will attend this concert. Let me start by duplicating our formula here. And just to remind you, we're going to count an expected value here, and it's going to be a probability, and a probability and an amount. And that's it. Now, the the actual values that are involved here are just people who will attend, right? So we're going to basically calculating something of an average here. All right, let's insert the amounts that are the benefit in either of these cases, right? This problem is interesting because the, to have a concert apparently is to have a benefit no, pretty much no matter what. It's the way it's going to turn out. Um, in this case, it is just a greater number of benefit, a greater number of people. So this is 20,000 people. And in this instance, it's still quite a lot of people. Just fewer. This isn't money. The amount of, of benefit or loss potentially would be an amount of people. It's just an interesting perspective, the way that it's phrased. Okay. As for the probabilities, to calculate here, um, you're going to have 20,000 people will attend if it is not raining. Right? So let's think about this percentage. All right, from uh, the, from this in this context, not raining. Right, we have a probability that it's going to rain, and that is thirty percent. We don't have to delve into the fraction. I don't really want to associate this with that number, but uh, I'm just short on space, so humor me. I'm trying to stay out of the way. We have a probability that it's going to rain, and the probability that it's going to rain is 30%. If you think about it uh, in, the, in, the, in the context of a complement, right, the probability of it not raining, you could use the complement formula, which is to subtract from 100% or one whole if you want, uh, rain prime if you will. But you could probably do this intuitively. What would the balance be out of 100? All right, if I made this 3 over 100, or 3 tenths if I simplified it, right, what would be that, be, that figure be subtracted from one whole? 70%. All right. Now, we're going to basically use 30 over 100, or 70 over 100, either here or here. But we have to be careful which is where we place it. All right, 
This figure of 20,000 is the people who will attend if it's not raining. So the probability here has to be 70%, right? Yes, all right. So 70 over 100, all right? This figure of 12,000 who will attend is if it is raining. So we're gonna use this probability of 30 over 100 here. And notice that there are no negatives in this case. Because again, people are gonna attend, it seems, no matter what. Anyhow, let's straighten up the arithmetic here. Let's put a one under that to make it look like a fraction and pull some tricks. Two zeros, two zeros. Seven times two is 14. One, two, three, 14,000 in this case. Put a one under this, knock off two zeros here. Three times 12 would be 36. Right. And then two zeros, one, two, 3,600. No negatives in this case. So on average, if you add 3,600 to 14,000, you get 17,600. Uh, 17, on average will attend okay uh, one more now uh, is it two more and then we're gonna introduce the other concept which is pretty fast Fair, fair price. I'm getting lightheaded somehow. Window here. here. <clears throat> Winning a door prize. When Josh attends a charity event, he is given a free ticket for the $50 door prize. Um, so we have some amount already quoted to us, and this amount is $50. Okay. This is the prize. Right. A total of 100 tickets will be given out. That's important. All right. Determine his expectation of winning the door prize. The expectation would be a probability and potentially a second probability in your mouth here. We may have to modify this a little bit. Let's consider the probability of winning first. That would be the number of tickets that are winning tickets and the number that are in the sample space. How many tickets uh, would win if you're only drawing from like a raffle lottery tumble thingy one, you know, one time, right? 
there would in theory be one ticket that wins. Right? There's nothing else to describe it as being, you know, there's a second prize yet. How many tickets are there in the same of the entire uh, set? There's 100. So the chances of winning are one in a hundred. This is a raffle, basically, without them specifying. Raffles are a better game because they pretty much they have a winner every time. There's always at least one winner. Um, let's calculate the probability of not winning. How many tickets would be not winning out of the total in the set? Uh, well, if there's only one winner, that means that there's 99 that lose, but it's still 100. The probability of a person winning is really not good, right? The probability of somebody losing is quite good. It's almost a guarantee, in fact, given 100 tickets. Now, let us consider what the benefits are. All right. In theory, and this is a little bit... Um, a little bit tricky. All right. The prize is $50, but in theory, if a person um, was given that for free, is it still the whole 50? It is. It's true. If the person paid for the ticket, that's another story. Right? Then you would deduct from the maximum. Uh, that's the subsequent questions. Um, even if the person didn't win, because they were given a free ticket, right? is there any loss on their part really in terms of money? No, right? It would be zero dollars because the ticket was free. So they have nothing to they have everything to gain and nothing to lose basically. All right. Anyhow, let's insert those values where they belong appropriately. Right. If I put in in terms of the first probability here, the probability of winning is one over a hundred, and then the benefit of winning. $50, which I'll just stick a one under it. And that would go there, all right? And then adjacent to it, the probability of losing would be 99 out of 100. But in this case, because of the unique circumstances of getting a free ticket, they don't really stand anything to lose. So they should pay $0. Okay. So what's going to happen if you multiply anything times zero? It's just going to cancel out this term, all right? That means that you're left with just this, all right? You could simplify it up front or just do top times top, bottom times bottom. In that instance, you're going to get $50 over 100, and then chop it down, that's 5 over 10, which is equal to a half, which in terms of a decimal equivalent is... 0 0.50 dollars, 50 cents, Josh's expectation is 50 cents, alright, All right, just playing this game, alright, the way that the math works out, it's giving you, most importantly, a positive value here, alright, and he didn't actually He's not going to actually get uh, 50 cents back, all right? Um, but the expected value, right, is uh, 50 cents. So even if he won something spiritually, <laughs> it's, you know, it's as if he won 50 cents, you might say, you know? The experience of playing with a free ticket under these conditions, 
as if he won 50 cents. You know, you might say the spiritual experience was worth 50 cents. That's kind of silly, I know, but it, I mean, it, it, it sort of makes, uh, it makes sense literally, right? Aha. Uh -huh. Uh, not a heck of a lot of sense, but uh, it's attaching a monetary value to um, playing a game, you know. All right. All right, example five is changing the conditions ever so slightly. Now, we went from him having a free ticket in this case to look what happens. In this description, example five, when Josh attends a charity event, he is given an opportunity. I presume it sounds like such, such, uh, you know, sort of uh, well-crafted lies, you know, to say, you have the opportunity, the amazing opportunity to participate in this ticket, you know, this purchase of a ticket. Well, lucky me, right? Purchase a ticket in this case, yay. All right, <laughs> for $50. Same price, $50, he has to pay in this case. All right. Um, there's still 100 tickets. So in terms of his probability, all right, one thing hasn't changed. The probability of winning is still one out of 100 because it's still a raffle, all right? It's still 100 tickets that are being given out. And let's just say this person uh, purchases one ticket. So it's one out of 100, okay? Now, Initially, the prize was $50, but because the person has the opportunity all right, to purchase a ticket that is two bucks, all right, are they really winning $50? <laughs> Not necessarily, right? Um, $50 prize minus $2, all right, would mean that this is really a $48 win, right? You paid for the experience of playing the game, all right? Josh, I should say, not any of you, all right? So here's our formula again. The expected value, all right, is gonna be the same probability, one out of 100, all right? But the, the amount is really a positive $48 instead. Because one would have to pay for the the pay to play, all right, two dollars. Right. Now, as to the other situation, um, let's figure out the adjacent probability. Uh, still, there's ninety nine. If you only buy one ticket, there's still ninety nine out of hundred uh, chances to win. All right, uh, to lose rather ninety nine. Yay. Nobody thinks about it in that context, but it's true. <laughs> I have such great probability of losing. Um, yay me. Um, in this case, though, um, because the ticket wasn't free, right? because the ticket wasn't free, it's not zero. All right. What does the person stand to lose buying one ticket? Minus $2. So the number that would be here would be negative two dollars. Okay, you might say, well, wasn't that factored in over here? It has to be factored in both instances, in both places. Okay. All right. You remember the person, Josh, put yourself in Josh's shoes, right? Is ultimately getting is getting something, right? They're getting the experience, right? And the experience cost them $2, all right? All right, at most $2. So if they do win, they're really going to be winning 48, all right? Now, in a decimal form of 100th, this would be 0 0.01 times 48, right? That's the same thing, really, as scooting the decimal point over two spaces to the left, which means that this is really 0.48. 48 cents, essentially. And in this case, uh, a little bit more complicated. Just 
puts two spaces over here. 99 times that, 18, carry the 1, 19, two spaces, $1.98. So this being a loss here is minus $1.98. All right, if you subtract positive 48 cents from $1.98, what do you get? There's too much dollar to get here. Zero. Five, $1.50, it's negative overall. The expected value, which means that it would really not be worth the trouble, would be a loss of $1.50. That's again, subscribing or devising a, a, a numerical figure to see how strategic this would be. Did the person win something? Again, it's kind of almost spiritual, right? To say that, yeah, they pay, they had an experience. They could have not had the experience at all and they would have just kept their $2, all right? But if they paid for the experience in the on average, in the long run, all right, a chunk of that, all right, um, would be uh, extracted from them. Just like before, the benefit of playing, all right, um, would be 50 cents, right, on average, never mind if they win or not, you know, the, the, in this case, it's not a benefit, the disadvantage of playing would be that they lose a dollar fifty. okay, so it's negative one, if you see a negative, it's a disadvantage, really, if you see a positive, however minuscule, it would technically be an advantage, right, and this is not the value that the person is actually going to be given, all right? You can think of it more in a spiritual sense. He had the experience. That's to say that the experience was worth something, right? If you got a positive, anyhow. Right. Uh, one more like this, and then we're going to shift gears. Okay. This is, they actually explicitly tell you this is a raffle. The other one would have to be a raffle. One would assume if it's a ticket. There's no lottery involved in this. raffle tickets are sold for a dollar each one grand prize of 500 and two consolation prizes of 100 will be awarded the tickets are placed in a bin the winning tickets will be selected from the bin um, assuming that the probability that any given ticket selected for the grand prize is one thousand one in a thousand and the probability that any given Ticket selected for a consolation prize is two in a thousand. Determine Irene's expectation if she purchases one ticket. Now you might be a little like me, kind of scratching your head and going, well, would they put the tickets back? You know, but don't even worry about that. They've already given you the probabilities. This is one for the grand prize, and this is two out of a thousand for the consolation prizes. Right? So they're giving you the, the probabilities. Okay, what you have to figure out in this case, ex Irene's expect expectation if she purchases one ticket is the monetary value that is associated with each of these. All right, so this person, Irene, purchases one ticket and the tickets are each a dollar. All right. And this is the, uh, the grand prize value 
and this is the consolation prize values, 100 each. Here's our formula. E is equal to P1, A1, minus P2, A2, and then maybe another one. All right, uh, let us begin so slowly, all right? This first term, we'll be discussing the grand prize in all its glory, all right? So, the probability that is first quoted to us is one in a thousand for the grand prize. Now, in terms of the monetary value that would be associated with that, what really would be the, what would the person actually win? If they hit it on, hit the luck, the jackpot here of one in a thousand, All right? Would they actually get a hundred dollars if they spent one? They wouldn't, right? It would be slightly smaller than that. So what would be the total then? Uh, pardon me, it's, the grand prize is 500. What would actually be the equivalent here if you spent one dollar and the prize is 500? Remember, you're paying for the experience. You or Irene, whoever. Well, it would be one dollar short, so it would be $499 technically. Right. This is the probability of winning the grand prize. Just to clarify. Right. The next term would be the probability of winning um, the consolation prizes. They already told us it's two out of a thousand. So we'll just put that in there. Because you get two chances. And this is still winning. Right. Um, let's figure out the benefit unique to that situation. All right. This is a hundred dollars, right? You only bought this. I, I should say you. The Irene bought one ticket. So uh, in truth, what would she actually? What would she actually be winning if she spent a dollar? One less than a hundred, right? So this would be ninety-nine dollars if she wins in either situation, and that's two out of a thousand, not a hundred. Right. And then there is one other situation. All right. There's going to be a third term in this case because these are just the situations when a person wins under that specific situation. This is a specific win. And this is a specific win. When it comes to losing, we don't have to be specific, right? essentially. I'm going to put a, a negative out here just to spare myself the trouble of worrying about it in terms afterward, right? Because this is going to be to lose entirely. You didn't hit the grand prize, you didn't hit the, the consolation prize, neither times. To lose entirely. All right, so this would be more or less losing in general. What would that be as a, a probability? 
Well, if we were just playing this game, all right, it would be the balance that makes a thousand, right? A thousand out of a thousand. All right, in which case it would be 999, right? But that is only accounting for that one time that the person lost, right? What if you factored in an additional two, all right? How many times could a person lose? <laughs> I know it happens like in theory when you're playing a raffle they don't they don't count every ticket but if you think about the the minutia all right a person technically wins a thousand minus three all right loses rather a thousand out of a thousand they're losing three times right uh, well subtract three from that which means that you're losing 997 times all right now because we're considering things in the context, the perspective of loss, what in reality is the person losing though? All right? In spite of this perhaps scary figure, do remember it is a fraction, it isn't the whole number. All right? What is the person actually losing? All right? How many tickets did they buy? They didn't buy three tickets. Their probability is losing 997 out of 1,000 times, and that is factoring in, subtracting by three. All right, the complement of, of winning would be not winning, right? And it happens that many, right? They only bought one dollar ticket. So you would put a um, dollar here. You're going to lose a dollar overall. Right? Now, when you do the calculation, the negative sign would normally go here, and that's still fine. I just put this here sort of to remind myself, so just to be sure, that you could put a positive there. Just stick with the formula if you like, all right? But it's gonna be these three things in sequence. This plus this minus that, essentially. I just ran out of space, all right? If you uh, figure out the arithmetic here, I'll put it up here just because I need the space. This first term, one out of a thousand, uh, is 0 0.001 times that, essentially, because that's tenths place, hundredths place, thousandths place, all right, times 499. The effect of that would be moving a decimal three spaces to the left, so one, two, three, and that would be point zero point four nine nine, all right, and that is a positive. Right. Now, uh, I know that there isn't a, a thousandth of a dollar. We have pennies, and pennies would be where this first nine is, technically. All right. But this is the way the arithmetic works out. All right. If this is two thousandths, all right, then it would be point zero zero two times ninety nine in that instance. Come on, we go. All right. Or dividing by a thousand and then multiplying by two. Either use 0 0.002 times that, right? Or uh, just move your decimal point three spaces, right? And then multiply by two as an amplitude. And 18 carrying the one. Nineteen. So be one point one nine eight. So this is still a positive as it's considering things from the perspective of winning. Zero point one nine eight. And now we have this down here, all right? Um, if you multiply, pardon me, if you divide one by that, this is the same as if you had this, 0.997, all right, times one, all right? It's just going to be that value, all right? You could pull the trick of moving three spaces, but then you're just multiplying by one anyhow, all right? So this is because it is a loss, a negative, so it would be 0.997. Right. Add these two, subtract that, right? and overall, what would you get? It ends up being negative overall. So, in theory, on average, in the long run, however you want to call it, all right, a person would, in theory, lose 30 cents. Right. They spent a dollar... Right, but they only lost 30 cents. And again, I, maybe I'm being hokey when I say this, but 
notice that it's not a dollar, all right? You're not gonna actually get paid 30 cents one way or another, but if you think about it this way, it might make give you a little bit more of a feel, all right? You paid for something, you had the experience, the experience cost you, you know, 30 cents. <laughs> you might say it that way. It's kind of a spiritual way of looking at things. And this is per ticket. Right. It would be a loss overall per ticket. Right. You did get something. It's just, you know, not enough. To, to even out. Right. Now the second part of this question is Irene's expectation if he purchased five tickets. Right. Um, I want to say there's probably a brute force way of doing this and then there's an easy way to do this. Let's do it the easy way first and then verify with the brute force way. If we just figured out that it's going to be a loss uh, of 30 cents per one ticket. And then the second question is Irene's expectation if she purchases five tickets. It would just essentially be this number, negative 0 0.30 times five. Right. So it's 0, 15, carry the one, a uh, dollar fifty. Negative a dollar fifty again. Right, to the situation of having purchased five tickets. Right. If you do it the brute force way, which is not bad, I mean, I, I like to verify personally. Um, that's just changing the probabilities, really. So I'll try to squeeze this in here as best I can. I really shouldn't be using blue, but just to expedite. This is the probability of winning grand. This is the probability of winning the consolation prize. And this is the probability of losing overall. Okay. Now, let's uh, figure out the probabilities. The original probability of winning the grand prize was one to a thousand. That's the one ticket, right? Now, let us say that you bought five tickets. So that means that it would be five in a thousand. Your probability would change. All right. The value that the person would win technically would be lower as well, right? When we're considering it in context here. All right. Uh, if the prize is 500 and you spent $5, what is 500 minus $5? 495, right? If uh, the person has uh, two out of a thousand to win the consolation prize, multiply that by five, all right? It would be 10 in a thousand. You could always reduce that if you'd like, just so you can simplify five to a thousand as well, all right? Um, the prize in that situation is 100, but if you spent $5, technically what did you win instead? $95, right? Just not to get this in the way here. Now let's consider the losses here. All right, a person under the initial conditions would lose uh, 997 times, right? Every thousand, all right? But um, it's gonna be worse than that, right? <laughs> do this from the perspective of a complement, so it's be um, one minus, um, how many times would you win? Uh, let's see. If you consider it as being one win, two wins, all right, it would be three out of a thousand, all right? 
this is winning under the original conditions of having one ticket. If you now play the game five times, it would be this figure times five, right? Which means that this would be 15 losses, all right, potentially. Now, if I figure that out of the complement of one whole, a thousand over a thousand, a thousand over a thousand, a thousand minus 15 would make this probability 985 out of a thousand. It's exacerbated by the fact that a person is purchasing five tickets versus one ticket. Right? When I arrived at the number before, 997 out of a thousand, that's losing, as in not winning, as in the complement of the whole. Right? Remember the complement formula is subtracting from a whole? So if winning is three out of a thousand, one minus three out of a thousand is 997 out of a thousand. That's why we used that figure before, because one whole is a thousand out of a thousand. All right, a thousand minus three is 997. In this case, it's gonna be that figure of three times a thousand, three out of a thousand, but five times worse, all right? So 15, all right? A thousand minus 15 is 985, all right? Now, in terms of losing of money, how many tickets would a person buy in theory? Well, five, five tickets is at a dollar a piece is five, five dollars, so it's minus. Right. Now, as for the minutia here, and again, I know that this is not necessary. If you just do five times that, as I mentioned, to get the answer, dollar fifty, negative dollar fifty. But this is brute force to prove that it's correct. All right, um, five out of a thousand would be scooting this over, times five, 25, 47, 24, all right? So this first chunk here is positive 2.475. This second chunk here, um, simplify, divide by 100, Two spaces. All right. This second chunk is one times that is plus zero point nine five. All right. Good. All right. This one, uh, you can simplify that. All right. That's a bit of a pain in the neck, but I'm going to use the decimal equivalent. Nine hundred eighty-five thousandths would be point nine eight five times five. 25 carry the 2, 40 plus 2 is 42, carry the 4, 45 plus that is 49. So decimal point is there. This is minus in this case, 4.925. Right. Now if you add these, 5, 12, 14, 3, 4, 2, 5, and it's a positive. So combine with this. 3.425 0, 0, 5, 1. And it's a negative overall. Same answer. Dollar fifty. Down negative one point five. Anyway. That is overkill. You don't have to do it that way, but uh, to me is like I wanted to see it, otherwise it seeing is believing, right? Anyhow, when you do this problem, as I mentioned, all right, if you figured out what the situation would be for one ticket is negative 0.3, and if you have five tickets, it's just that times five, and you get negative $1.50, all right? This is a more brute force way of doing it, as if you didn't answer the original question. shift years here and we will do um, fair price next.
think I might be able to turn off my projector finally. I'm hoping to call the last game of the semester. I just bought this camera uh, in January, or maybe late December, I forget. But uh, I don't want it to burn out on me prematurely. I use it a lot. Um, the next uh, formula that you will see right, in the packet is in reference to this. So this is as good an explanation as possible here. There's a formula for fair price. Right. What is fair price? Right. Um, Fair price, think of it this way, is the amount pay to play the actual amount. that would result in breaking even. Right, which means what? That the expected value would be equal to zero dollars. It'd be perfectly neutral, neither a loss nor a gain when one breaks even. All right, so reiterate that. Fair price is essentially the actual amount that a person would pay to play that would result in breaking even. That doesn't mean that that actually happens, it's just that you're figuring it out as an afterthought. All right. Now, um, to summarize, you could calculate it from this formula. The fair price is equal to an expected value minus the cost to play. So whatever the expected value actually is, and whatever the person actually paid, this is actual, this is actual, this is what would have to be. To be fair. Fair price is the actual amount you would pay to play that would result in breaking even. Okay. So, for the sake of space, let me give you a quick question. I'm gonna reiterate uh, what is problem seven. I can paraphrase it, so I don't have to turn on the projector. Down here is seven. I'm gonna read you this and then paraphrase. All right. At a game of chance, the expected value is found to be negative $1.50. All right. And the course to play the game is $4. Determine the fair price to play the game. Right. Essentially, so if the expected value is negative a dollar fifty and the pay to play
is four dollars. What? The the fair price. Play. What would it have to be? Alright, you're just gonna substitute these values. Right. Substitute for the expected value in the formula, uh, substitute for the cost or pay to play value in the formula and do the arithmetic. So um, the expected value here is negative $1.50. And this is a plus, sorry, at least to start with. The cost of this is $4, so plus $4, right, which means that the actual fair price should be what? It should be $2.50 not what it actually cost. If under whatever the specific conditions of the game and they're not described, right? Um, if this were the ticket price, right? Or whatever the cost to enter is, all right? Then the result here would be zero, right? Whatever the probabilities are, right? okay? Essentially, this price is what would result in um, an expected value equaling zero dollars instead. Don't get bogged down by the details that you see here. They're like, well, that doesn't add up to zero, even if I try to combine these two things. All right, there's probabilities that are not being described to you, all right? What are the conditions, you know? What's the gain, what's the lose, all right? The only information we have is the expected value and the cost of play, and this is what would create a balance in theory from what we know, all right? A breaking even. The uh, specifics are hidden, basically, okay? So uh, it's just those two formulas that you need to know ultimately, the expected value formula and the fair price formula right, for this section 11.3, okay? Yeah. So the homework, All right, just do section 11.3 in my lab, and then you're all squared away, okay? Uh, today's Tuesday, so I'll see you again on Thursday. All right, be careful out there.